So let's start with the vitamins, some pearls about the vitamins as stated in your textbook. So these are the major categories of vitamins. So we have two. We have the fat soluble, then we have the water soluble vitamins. So vitamins are categorized as either fat soluble and the water soluble vitamins. Now the fat soluble is the famous vitamin A, D, E, and K. So your mnemonics here is ADIC. Now personally, if you just memorize ADIC, you have just excluded the water soluble vitamins already, which is vitamin B complex and vitamin C or ascorbic acid. So under the fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K, under the water soluble vitamins, we have B complex, so that's broken down into folic acid, niacin, pantothenic acid, pyridoxine, biotin, and the last water soluble vitamin, which is ascorbic acid. So take time to go over this slide. Okay, let's proceed. So what are your fat soluble vitamins? It's A, D, E, and K, that's ADIC. So what should, we re what should we remember and what should we know about the characteristics of fat soluble vitamins? So number one, it requires bile and the presence of pancreatic juice for its absorption. So fat soluble vitamins requires bile and pancreatic juice for its absorption. And your fat-soluble vitamins are actually transported to the liver via the lymph in the form of lipoproteins. So it's transported to the liver via the lymph as lipoproteins. Now this is very important. Fat-soluble vitamins are stored in various tissues. Fat-soluble vitamins are not normally excreted in the urine. So what is your clinical correlate here? Fat-soluble vitamins, since it's stored and not normally excreted, it can easily cause toxicities or hypervitaminosis. So it's the fat-soluble vitamins. Of the fat-soluble vitamins, it is usually vitamin A, which is most commonly associated with hypervitaminosis or toxicity. So let's start in alphabetical order. We have vitamin A, memorize the retinol, okay? So this is the biochemical form of your vitamin A. And vitamin A has precursors, which we call carotenes. You've probably heard of the word beta-carotenes. This is the most effective pro-vitamin. So beta-carotene is the most effective pro-vitamin. Visual mnemonics, carrots forming the letter A, because one of the best sources for beta-carotene and vitamin A is, of course, carrots. You might want to add squash or calabasa. Now, functions of vitamin A or retinol. First function and the most important function is actually it's part of the visual process. Why? Vitamin A is a constituent of the visual pigment, which we call rhodopsin. So that's your magic word, rhodopsin or the visual pigment. And vitamin A also supports the growth and it also supports the maintenance of epithelial tissues. So it supports the growth and the maintenance of epithelial tissues. So some deficiencies. So if you are deficient in vitamin A, you can present with keratomalacia, okay? So that's gonna be ulceration or scarring of the sclera, so keratomalacia. Here's another picture of keratomalacia. Another picture of keratomalacia. And of course, nyctalopia or night blindness. So this is impairment of dark adaptation. 
and this is due to the functional failure of the retina and the proper regeneration of rhodopsin. So if you remember a while ago, we mentioned that vitamin A is a constituent of your rhodopsin. So basically, the earliest, I'd like to repeat, the earliest manifestation of vitamin A deficiency is actually nyctalopia or night blindness. So what is the earliest manifestation of vitamin A deficiency? It is nyctalopia. Next is vitamin D. So I'd like to clarify, a lot of people say vitamin D comes from sunlight. So that's a misnomer. If you read your Harper's well, it states that vitamin D is part and parcel or required in the metabolism of vitamin D. So it's wrong to tell your patients that you get vitamin D from sunlight. What you get from sunlight is a sunburn. So let's go textbook. Vitamin D, biochemical form, is calciferol. So, calciferol. Now, vitamin D has two precursors, vegetable origin and animal origin. So vegetable origin is vitamin D2, that's ergo calciferol. Animal origin is vitamin D3, that's coli calciferol. So please take note, vitamin D2 is ergo calciferol, vitamin D3 is coli calciferol. Now if you only have one neuron left, memorize the coli calciferol. Trust me. So let's answer this board recall. What is the active form of vitamin D? So vitamin D is 125-dihydrocolicalciferol. Now for those who don't have a good memory, I suggest you memorize the number. It's 125. Okay, this is vitamin D3. This is known as 125-dihydrocolicalciferol. Now always remember in basic physiology, the conversion of vitamin D into its active form, this occurs in the kidneys. So this occurs in the kidneys. Now what about the functions of your vitamin D or your calciferol? So take note, calcium, phosphate, then we have, of course, the bone. So calcium, phosphate, and bone. So in detail, vitamin D promotes the intestinal absorption of calcium. It also stimulates the active transport of phosphate. And most importantly, vitamin D mobilizes calcium from the bone. So it promotes intestinal absorption of calcium. It also stimulates active transport of phosphate. And it mobilizes calcium from the bone. So some sources of vitamin D, we have egg yolk, mushrooms, soya, and fish. Egg yolk, mushrooms, soya, and fish. Now deficiency, please memorize this. I can smell this in the board exam already. So we have rickets and osteomalacia. So if you have a deficiency of vitamin D and you're a child, you will develop rickets. In adults, it's osteomalacia. So please memorize this. So deficiency, rickets, then we have osteomalacia. So here's a classic picture, okay? Pay attention to the legs, okay? Lumpy joints, bow legs, there. So take note of that. Classic picture or signs of rickets. So take a minute. You might want to write this down, the soft spot on the baby's head, the bony necklace or the rachitic rosary. You have the curved bones, the big lumpy joints, and the bowed legs. So 
Here's another picture of rickets. The most classical here would be the lady on the right. Okay, look at the bow legs. The bent joints here. Next is vitamin E, or what we call alpha tocopherol in the textbook. So vitamin E or alpha tocopherol had a very important antioxidant property. So it helps prevent the peroxidation of your PUFA or your polyunsaturated fatty acids. It also enhances the activity of vitamin A. So vitamin A also has antioxidant properties. So these antioxidants serve as scavengers of oxygen-free radicals. This is alpha tocopherol. So anticipate this in the exam. What are the antioxidant vitamins? There's three, vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E. So your mnemonics, the antioxidants, ACE. Now next, and the last of the fat-soluble vitamins is vitamin K. So we have anti-hemorrhagic factor, then we have coagulation factor. These are the other names of vitamin K. Vitamin K is also known as anti-hemorrhagic factor and coagulation factor. Now in the textbook, vitamin K exists in three forms. First form is your phylloquinone which is from plants. Next is from bacterial synthesis. This is menaquinone and the synthetic drug form, which is menadion. So from plants, particularly green leafy vegetables, that's your phylloquinone. Then from the synthesis, bacterial synthesis, that's menaquinone. And the fat soluble synthetic form is menadion. You go back to your clerkship and internship during pediatrics you probably injected vitamin k in a newborn preterm baby whom you probably had the impression of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn so what you actually injected is vitamin k now please memorize this what are the vitamin k dependent clotting factors we have four we have factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, and we have factor 10. The famous 1972 or 27910. What are the vitamin K dependent clotting factors? Memorize this for your exam. Now, deficiency in vitamin K, the major manifestation or symptom would be abnormal bleeding. Now, what causes vitamin K deficiency? One, when a patient has lipid malabsorption. Two, when a patient has liver disease. Example, liver cirrhosis. Third, would be destruction of your intestinal flora by your antibiotic therapy. And the high risk population for vitamin K deficiency would be newborn infants and premature babies. Here's a picture, common signs of bleeding. 